Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Please like, comment and share the video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more content. Good day and thank you for joining us. So if you can recall in our last lesson, we did our introduction to hyperbola and also how do we plot the hyperbola. Um, we also found that the standard form for hyperbola was as follows as y is equal to a over x plus q. And obviously q being our vertical shift or our asymptote and then a is just going to tell us which quadrants our hyperbola is existing in either the first, second, third or fourth. Remember that the first quadrant is always paired with the fourth quadrant and the second quadrant is always paired with the third quadrant. So today's lesson we'll be looking at determining the equation. So if we look at our example on the left hand side we can say we've got an hyperbola that is in the first and fourth quadrant. So we already know what our a value will sort of look like, whether it be a um, positive or negative. So what we need to do now is use these values over here. So they give us a point here, minus 4 and 2, right? Minus 4 being the x value, 2 being the y value. And we can see that there is no asymptote, or how can I say vertical shift, right? So remember, if there's an asymptote, if, if there's an asymptote or if there's a Q value, then we will see an asymptote here that is not the X axis, right? So if obviously our asymptote is our X axis, that means that there is no Q. Q is equal to zero, right? So we know that Q is equal to zero. So the standard form of the equation for this graph over here that we're looking at will look as follows. It's Y is equal to A over X. Cool? Remember, because Q is equal to zero, because our asymptote, horizontal asymptote is our X axis. So all we need to do now to find the value of a, which is our only unknown, is to substitute in an x and a y value. And we are given one in this case, right? Minus 4 and 2. So once we substitute that in, so we'll say sub in minus 4 and 2. Once we sub that in, what our equation looks like is 2 is equal to a over minus 4. And so to get a by itself, we know that we... Let me just make that look more like an a we know that we need to times by negative 4, right, which is a fraction of here, so we'll times by negative 4, which is the one side, which is the other side, so obviously that will cancel out there, minus 4 times 2 will give me minus 8, which is equal to a, or a is equal to minus 8. And once we find a value for a, we need to substitute into the equation to give our final equation, so we can say therefore y is equal to minus 8 over x. And that is going to be your final answer for this equation. Now, moving on. We get given a case here, so this is going to be number 2. In this case, what we're given is an asymptote, as we can see, a horizontal asymptote of 1. Right, so we know that we have a Q value equal to 1. And also, we've been given a random point in the graph, minus 1 and minus 3. So, because we have an asymptote, we can just write out our standard form for this equation. Because we know that there is a Q value now, we can include in our equation, so it's going to be Y is equal to A over X plus Q. Right? So we're using the full standard form of our hyperbola. All we need to do now is substitute in what we know to find what we don't know. Obviously, we need to work out A in this case, right? Because we have Q and we have a value for X and Y, which is given to us over here. So let's just substitute in everything we know so we can find out A, which we do not know. So we're going to sub in minus 1 and minus 3. And also Q is equal to 1. And so once we sub all of those in, we have minus 3 is equal to A over minus 1 plus 1. And then all we need to do from this point is solve for A. So that positive 1 comes over becomes minus 1. So this is a minus 4 is equal to A over minus 1. And then to get a by itself, we times by minus 1 both sides. And so we get a final answer of a is equal to a positive 4. Obviously, once we get that answer for a, we just write out our final equation, showing now our a value that we found. So it is going to be y is equal to 4 over x plus 1. And just like that, we found our final answer. So you can see this is in as uh, isn't as difficult as you might think 
all we're doing is substituting in things that we know um, to find what we do not know, right? So we're just solving for the unknown, basically. But if we move over to the next one, we can see that things start to get a bit more trickier. So in this case, we can see that they've given us a point over here for the hyperbole in the second quadrant, and then a point here in the third quadrant, right? Which is obviously the x-intercept over here. And then the, there's also an asymptote, but they do not give us the value of q. Right? There's a horizontal asymptote of, or a vertical shift in the graph, but they do not give us a value for q. So straight away we know that we're going to have two unknowns. And in that case it would be a and q. Right? So we, on, we don't have a value for a at the moment, and we don't have a value for q. So if we write out the equation, if we write out an equation and say we were using 1 and 3 to solve for A or Q, right? So we obviously know our standard form because there's a asymptote is Y is equal to A over X plus Q. So if we can substitute in this point um, from the top hyperbola over here into this equation and then do the same for the second one to get two different equations, let's just see where that brings us. So we're going to substitute in the 1 and 3. So if we're subbing in 1 and 3, what we left with here is 3 is equal to a over 1 plus q. Okay, so we obviously know that a over 1 is just going to be a. So we can just put here, just so it's easier to see, it's just a plus q, right? And then we'll do sub in... The other point is minus 2, which is the x value, and then 0, which is the y value, obviously, because it's on the x-axis, where y is equal to 0. So, once we sub those points in, what we end up getting is obviously y is 0, so this is 0, is equal to a over minus 2, and this is going to be plus q, because obviously we do not have a value. So, from this point, what we can just do is take the q over and just write it out as minus q is equal to a over minus 2. So from this point, let's just bring down our equations that we have at the moment. We have 3 is equal to a plus q. And we also have minus q is equal to a over minus 2. So in this case, now we have two equations. And what we could go ahead and do is simultaneous equations, OK? So you can choose to go any route from here where you choose to make A the subject of the equation or you choose to make Q the subject of the equation. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use the first equation of here, so we'll call this equation number 1 and this equation number 2. And I'll make equation number 1 and I'll use that and I'll make A the subject of my equation. So what I end up getting here is a third equation which is A is equal to 3 minus Q. Let me just make that look more like an A for you guys. There we go. And this is going to be my equation number 3, right? So I'm going to say I'm going to sub in equation number 3 into equation number 2. Remember, you can't sub substitute your equation number 3 into the equation that it was made from. So equation number 3 was made from equation number 1. So we can't substitute those into each other. We have to substitute equation number 3 into the other available equation, which in this case is equation number 2. So... Obviously, we have a as the subject here, so wherever we see a in equation number 2, that's where we'll put 3 minus q. So we go minus q is equal to, so we have a there at the top, so this is going to be 3 minus q over minus 2. So what we're going to do to get rid of this fraction is times by negative 2 both sides, obviously, and that gets rid of this fraction, and then we have on this side left over, so minus q times minus 2 gives me positive 2q. And on this side, we have 3 minus q. The q will go over, become positive. So this becomes 3q is equal to 3. And then to get q by itself, we divide by 3 both sides. And so q is going to be equal to 1. So now we have found one of our unknowns. And all we need now to do to find the value of a is to substitute this q value into any one of these three equations. And obviously, I already have a as the subject of my, of my equation number 3. So I will just substitute q is equal to 1 into equation number 3. So I'm going to say sub q is equal to 1 into equation number 3. And so what that ends up looking like is a is equal to 3 minus 
1. And so then we find that a is equal to 2. And so with knowing that, we found our a and our q are two unknowns. From that point, then we just write out our final equation. I'm just going to use a different color to make it stand out for you guys. It's going to be y is equal to, obviously, no a at the top, so it's 2 over x plus 1. And that is going to be our final equation in this case. Now for our next example, what I want you to do is pause the video right here and just give yourself a shot at working out this example over here. And then once you're done working out, you can resume the video and I will be going through it. Okay, now that you've been given some time to do this example, um, hopefully you got the answer. Let's go ahead and solve for it. So in this case, we can see what's given to us is y is equal to 1 which we obviously know when we have y is equal to 1 here and it's an asymptote, that's our horizontal asymptote, we know that it is our q value. And we also be given this point over here, which is the x-intercept, which is 1, right? So we know this is 1 and 0. So from here, we just write out our standard form because we know of asymptote. So our standard form is y is equal to a over x plus q. And then from here, what we're going to do is substitute in all of our known values. We know q is equal to 1, and we have 1 and 0 as our point. So we're going to say sub in our point 1 and 0, and q is equal to 1. On substitute those points in, we have 0 is equal to a over 1 plus 1. And so what happens is we take that 1 over, it becomes minus 1 is equal to a over 1. And obviously, a over 1 is just a, right? So that means that therefore, a is equal to negative 1. And so from here, what we do is, obviously, we plug into our equation all of the values that we just found. And so we get y is equal to minus 1 over x plus 1 as our final answer. And then just to do one more example for you guys. Okay, so once again, what I want you guys to do is to just pause the video right here. Um, give yourself some time to solve it. And once you're finished, you can resume the video and I'll be going through the example. Okay, cool. Now that you've done that, uh, let's go ahead and solve for this equation over here. We need to find the equation of this hyperbola. So we know that we have a asymptote of the horizontal asymptote. It's given to us as 4, and then this point over here is given to us, which is 5 and 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out our standard form, is y is equal to a over x plus q. And then we'll say, sub in 5 and 5, and q is equal to 4. So we'll sub all of that in, we have 5 is equal to a over 5 plus so what's going to happen is 4 is going to go over, become negative. So it's 5 minus 4 is equal to a over 5. So we get 1 is equal to a over 5. And so obviously get a by itself, we times by 5 both sides. And so therefore, a is going to be equal to 5. And so then we can say, therefore, we get a different color here. Therefore, y is equal to 5 over x plus 4. And that is the final answer. Hopefully you got that. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that uh, today's lesson helped you understand how to determine the equation of hyperbola in the different circumstances where they only give you um, one set of points and th there is no asymptotes given really, or the situation where there was an asymptote. They didn't give us the value of the asymptote but they gave us um, a point on one hyperbola and the other one. So we had to do simultaneous equations. And then in this case over here, where they give us both the horizontal asymptote and one point to work with. Well, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me and have a good one.